Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to continue on with the, um, for the favorites videos that I'm doing. So uh, this is going to be uh, just M to N, because I have a lot of artists that have uh, M's in their names. So, and uh, I didn't have any that, so I ended my last with J and I don't have anything in between J and M. So these are going to be M and N and I have a lot. So I'm going to start moving along with them. Uh, so the first one is going to be John Mayer, and this is by far my favorite John Mayer album, Where the Light Is. This is a four LP set, and it was a live concert that he did, and it has pretty much all of his huge hits from Continuum on it, along with some fantastic acoustic sets, and also some songs from his previous albums. His version of Neon on this album is just unbelievable. It is one of the hardest, most complex songs to play, and it's just amazing how he plays that song. And then pretty much all of his songs with his band set and its trio set, I'd say 80% of those songs have Steve Jordan and Pino Palladino. So just the lineup is incredible. It's an unbelievable album. John Mayer, Where the Light Is. Um, this is still in print from uh, Music on Vinyl, so it's very accessible. Also, you could stream it online. It's, it's a great, great album. Um, so next album is going to be from Jackie McLean. Uh, Jackie McLean, and my favorite is Right Now. I love this album so, so dearly. This is by far my favorite Jackie McLean album. Um, I love the song Poor Eric on this. So there's only four songs on this whole album. Echo, Pure er uh, Poor Eric, uh, Chistel's Time, and Right Now. Poor Eric is unbelievable. It is such a phenomenal song. And this is another one of those albums where there's only one horn. It's just Jackie McLean. So he's got nothing to hide behind. He's got no person, no other horn to help him through with the melody and with the head and also with soloing. So, you know, he pretty much does it all on this album. I love this album. Um, I'll show you the back as well with the liner notes. Jackie McLean, you can see it's... Uh, this is a stereo copy, and it's 4215. This actually is right after Liberty Buy is Blue Note, so it was actually still recorded by Rudy Van Gelder, but it wasn't released until Liberty Liberty actually released this album. So next is going to be an artist that I'm always semi on the fence about, truthfully, and I only own one of his albums because of that, and I feel like if you're only going to own one of his albums, you're going to own this one. So this is uh, Charles Mingus, Mingus Ahum. And you can see uh, right, you know, right up there, Charles Mingus, Mingus Aham. Um, there's your songs in the back. Okay, this is quite an extensive album. Um, Goodbye Porcupine is really a fantastic song on this. And so it was better, uh, better get it in your soul. Uh, it, overall, it's a fantastic album. But I always kind of have to be in the mood for Mingus. Um, you can see it's on Columbia, Columbia 1370. Um, I'm always on the fence about Mingus, truthfully. I gotta be in the mood to listen to Mingus, and so that's why I don't really own much of anything else by Mingus, just this one album. It's just my, you know, just my, I feel like they're a little too arranged for my taste, just me. Um, next is gonna be Hank Mobley, hands down my absolute most favorite Hank Mobley album, Workout. Um, I cannot even begin to tell you how much I love Hank Mobley and Grant Green's interactions on this album. So here's your liner notes on their back. You'll see it's Hank Mobley. You got Grant Green, uh, who's on guitar, Witten Kelly on piano, Paul Chambers on bass, Billy Joe Jones on drums. Everything about this album is perfect, in my opinion. Um, from the title track, which is Workout, Aha uh -huh is my absolute favorite Hank Mobley tune. And the interplay between Mobley and Grant Green on this album, on that song, is just phenomenal. Smoking is on side two. The best thing in life is the free and greasy, uh, uh, grease and easy. Hank Mobley workout. Um, next is going to be Thelonious Monk, and my favorite Monk album is this one. Uh, this is at Carnegie Hall, featuring John Coltrane uh, with the Monk group, and it's got obviously Monk playing piano. John Coltrane on sax, um, Amal, I never say his name, uh, Ahmed Amal Malik on bass, and Shadow Wilson on drums. So very unconventional um, 
well, not unconventional, but again, Coltrane's got no one to hide behind uh, horn-wise. However, this is a little different because anytime you're playing with Monk, Monk in and of himself can be a whole band in some respects. Um, it's a very nice gatefold. They, re they re uh, released this early 2000s. It was a concert that never got released, and they discovered the tapes. It was a performance at Carnegie Hall in 1957. Um, they did. Uh, this is this is the first pressing of it, which was actually done on mosaic, um, mosaic. But they did re-release this um, for for whatever really weird reason. The original press of this is only one LP, and the the second pressing is actually two LPs. And there's a lot of dead wax on each one of them. I don't know why that is and why they chose to do that, but kind of just a weird, interesting thing. Um, Thelonious Monk at Carnegie Hall. Beautiful, beautiful album. Um, next up, this is the only album I have by this artist, and I've showed this a few times on my channel. This is Pat Moraine. Um, you know, you can go to my other videos to hear about this one. I don't, I don't need to reiterate for you guys because I've already spoken about this one multiple times. But uh, this is Pat Moraine. Uh, great, great album on the Auto Fidelity label. And then uh, moving forward, the last of the M's, and then I have one N. And that kind of rounds out um, this video, Lee Morgan Leeway. This isn't my favorite Lee Morgan album. This is my second favorite Lee Morgan album. Um, however, I don't own my favorite one because of the fact that uh, it's similar to what I described about the Clifford Brown album. I'm just super picky and I want one that's really, really clean. And so I keep holding out. So uh, my favorite Lee Morgan album is Search for a New Land. This is my second favorite Lee Morgan album, but by default, my favorite one I own right now. Um, you can see Jackie McLean, Bobby Timmons, Paul Chambers, Art Blakey. Unbelievable album. This album is just everything from beginning to end is amazing. Lion and the Wolf is my favorite, second favorite Lee Morgan song besides Search for the New Land. I love that, I love that song, fourth track on this album. Um, We've talked, you know, within the VC they've been talking about, obviously, that Blue Note project, and that's, you know, one of the ones we spoke about. Last one, I did a video on this as well, um, Fabulous Fats Navarro. I'm a huge Fats Navarro fan. Um, this is volume uh, one of this, and I'm still looking to get volume two. Uh, basically, this was just a, uh, this was a comp of four different sessions, basically. Um, vol side one of volume two and side is one and then side two is a different session and then respectively volume two has one side as a session two sides as a sessions of fat navarro and you again you could go to the video on this one he all recorded in the 78 era so he doesn't really have a true album session like we're used to with 12 inches so anything you're going to listen to him is from the 78 era because he passed away so young but fabulous fats navarro um, Blue Note 1531, and then Volume 2 is 1532. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time for the next video.